You wanna know what's awesome? Putting video cameras out into nature and seeing what animals do when humans are not around. I've been doing this for my field experiments for years and I've seen some pretty wild stuff. Of course, one concern of mine was always that I didn't want to get my cameras stolen. I just never expected that the thief would be non-human. So I was conducting a field experiment with my good friend and former undergraduate research assistant, Julie. You may recall our past run-ins with vermeated snails, AKA spider snails. That's a worthy adversary. While well, following the surveys that we did on those snails across islands, we became interested in understanding how the mucus that the snails cast out like a net, how this may affect corals in combination with sedimentation, which similarly covers corals. You can think of sedimentation as the Sandman. So our question was, how does spider snail and the Sandman combine to affect corals? Do these two villains strengthen one another when they combine, or do they weaken one another, or do they seem to not affect one another? So in order to answer these questions, we did this field experiment where we, we manipulated both vermeated presence and sedimentation. And part of the need for this experiment was watching the corals that we put out in the field and seeing how long mucus and sediment stay on the coral surface. That's where these little guys become particularly handy. So these GoPros are awesome and they're built to do these time-lapse photography shots. So we can put these cameras out, we can focus it on our corals, and we can make it take a photo every 10 seconds. We can make it run for six hours and we can see over this long time period how does mucus and sediment change on the coral surface. One day we're going out to pick up our cameras and Julie needed to pick up two cameras, I needed to pick up two cameras, and just about the point when I'm about to pick up the second camera, I hear Julie scream. I poke my head out of the water and I hear Julie yell to me, come quick, a camera's missing. Not something you want to hear. So I swim as fast as I can over to Julie and what I see is pretty shocking. So if you couldn't tell what that was, that was an octopus. Not just any octopus, a pretty strong octopus because the way that we deploy these cameras is we strap them down very tightly onto five pound dive weights using cable ties. These are the same cable ties that cops use to arrest people when they don't have handcuffs. They're built to take a beating, but apparently not built strong enough to take a beating from an octopus. This octopus had to have just twisted this camera so much that it mangled the cable tie, which we found next to the weight afterward. And then it pulled the camera down into its underground lair. Fortunately for us, when we arrived, the octopus was hanging out at the mouth of his cave so we could see him and the camera. Otherwise, we would have never even known what happened to the camera. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you notice? Did you notice that he had it? I as soon as I saw the octopus, I turned back. Octopus oh tried to steal our GoPro. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I definitely felt bad about ruining this octopus's dream to become a world famous photographer, but I've got to give him credit. He actually does have some skills. So shortly after we pulled the camera, of course, I took it back to the lab to see what sort of photos we were able to get. I didn't know how long the octopus had had the camera. Lucky for us, the time lapse was running the whole time, so we got to see some of the octopus's handiwork, including some pretty cool shots of tentacles and suction cups and the deep, dark recesses of his lair where he held our hero captive until we could rescue him. Lesson learned, we gotta tighten these guys down even harder. GoPro, again, I'm still waiting on that sponsorship. Call me.